Bonjour. This is a lesson on the imperfect tense. If you're watching this lesson on YouTube, you can find out how to take the full course in the description below. The full course is also part of my French program for self-learners. So your first step is going to be to download the copy of your cours, uh, and you can take notes and write rules and examples from the lesson. It's always a good idea for you to, to write your own notes. Uh, I want you to download your lesson guide and keep it in your French folder as a handy reference. Be sure to download and complete after the lesson, complete the written exercise. That's your first step in practicing, right? When forming the imperfect in context. In context. <clears throat> then I want you to take advantage of all the resources uh, that are part of this course. I want you to follow the audio drill instructions for the very important verbs vouloir, devoir, pouvoir, and savoir in the imperfect. Uh, this is a new feature and I think that you'll find it very helpful. I also have one for the verbs être, aller, avoir, and faire in the imperfect. You will then have an opportunity to listen to a story about La Journée de Vanessa. It's a story completely told in the imperfect tense. So I've included a text version and an English translation for you so you can compare the English and French. That helps a lot sometimes. Actually, it helps a ton, okay? Um, I want you to then practice and master the imperfect with your set of 50 practice cards and an answer key is included. All right, so let's get started with this lesson on the French imperfect tense. Uh, so the imperfect is just one of the ways that you can speak in the past. Um, I'm sure you've already dabbled around with or maybe even learned completely the passé composé. The first thing I want to tell you is what the difference is between the imparfait and the passé composé, because they're two different ways of speaking in the past, equally important, okay? Uh, the imperfect you'll probably find is a lot easier to form than the passé composé, okay? Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So let me tell you, the imparfait, first of all, does not require a helping verb. So write that down on your cours. It doesn't require a helping verb like être or avoir. And it doesn't have a past participle either. Okay, so you don't have to learn any irregular past participles and things like that with the imparfait. Finally, the imparfait is used to give details or description, let's say. Descriptions about the past. Okay, now that's the imparfait. What about the passé composé, right? The passé composé, let's remember that's used to talk about things that happened, okay, in the past. So you're going to use the passé composé. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You're going to use the passé composé to talk about things that had a definite, what, a definite beginning, I always say that, and a definite ending. That's the passé composé. And you use the passé composé to talk about a sequence of events. Quite different to the imparfait, okay? So just let's remember that they're used in different ways. So let me give you a little sample sequence of events, show you what I mean. And this is still the passé composé. So I got up this morning. Je me suis levé. Uh, and I'm going to add an extra E if I'm feminine. Je me suis levé uh, ce matin. D'accord? Passé composé. There's my helping verb right there. And then this is my past participle. Okay? I brushed my teeth. Now, these are reflexive verbs. Je me suis brossé les dents. D'accord? No extra E on brossé because we have the body part rule. Remember? Okay, I got dressed. Still reflexive. Je me suis habillé. D'accord? So, all of those, I have a helping verb, which is être, since they are reflexive verbs, and I have a past participle. Now, this one, I went to work, is not reflexive. Je suis allé au travail. Or, if you want to say au boulot, or if you want to say au bureau, that's fine. Uh, passé composé, do you see that sequence of events? 
These are things that all happened. They had a beginning and an ending. Now, what we want to do is add description to the sequence of events. And we're going to do that using the imparfait. That's the whole purpose of the imparfait. And it's what makes life more interesting. It's what makes what you're saying more interesting. Okay, so look, I'm just going to scoot this down so I can have it all in one spot. Now, let's talk about when, and over here on the left, it's in English, okay? I like for you to compare. The passé composé, remember, is what happened. So, when I woke up this morning, I'm going to put that in the passé composé column because it's something that happened. It begins the sequence of events. Donc, quand je me suis réveillé ce matin, comma, now, I'm going to say I really didn't want to get out of bed because I was tired. Now, that's not something that happened. That's giving description. D'accord? So we can use the passé composé and imparfait together. So look over here on the imparfait column. Je ne voulais, imparfait, I'll teach you how to form it here in a minute. Je ne voulais vraiment pas sortir du lit parce que j'étais, that's the imperfect, fatigué. D'accord? J'étais fatigué. You see how this is working? Now, let's continue the story. I got up anyway. Je me suis levé quand même. D'accord? Je me suis levé quand même. Looks like that. That's the next part in the sequence of events. When I woke up this morning, quand je me suis réveillé ce matin, blah, 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 all this other stuff, description. And then the next thing in the sequence of events, je me suis levé quand même. Get back up there. Je me suis levé quand même. And then I did something else. I went into the kitchen. Et... That should have been a comma, I suppose. Et je suis allé où? Dans la cuisine. D'accord? Je suis allé dans la cuisine. I did it. It happened. Now look, when I got in there, in other words, when I arrived, that's going to be passé composé because it happened at all. So let's start with the passé composé column. Quand j'y suis... Arrivé. That's my pronoun E, indicating place, in this case, the kitchen. Quand j'y suis arrivé, so I, I arrived there, and now I'm going to add some description. Look, it was dark and I was afraid. Il, fe, il faisait, that's the imperfect, uh, il faisait noir, that's dark. Did you know? Noir means black, but it also means dark. Il faisait noir et j'avais peur. Voilà. D'accord? Virgule. That's the interesting stuff. But I made the coffee anyway, right? Coffee essential. Um, mais j'ai fait passer composé le café uh, quand même. Of course, you can also say de toute façon if you prefer. You don't want to say quand même twice in the same little text. Okay? Uh, so that's an example of using the two together. Now let's talk about when you should really use the imperfect. We've talked a lot about when exactly to use the passé composé. What you're going to use, this is what I like, this is how I like to teach the imperfect, okay? To begin with, there are a few ways to use it, but you definitely use the imparfait to say that someone was doing something. Okay, that someone was doing something. So that's why I've written here was plus verb ing or were plus verb ing. You see all of that? That's important because anytime you say, for example, I was walking, he was reading, she was eating. Um, I guess I should have put one in there. For we were doing something, right? So we 
were talking. D'accord? Was, were, verb, ing. Now look, I'm going to show you here, before I even show you how to form the imperfect, I'm going to show you what this looks like. I was walking. Je marchais. All right? Because the, the verb marcher is to walk, right? Marcher. That's just one word, marcher. And in English, over here, we have two words, was walking. Please don't be tempted. And I know it's tempting because we see the words was and were. You don't need the verb être in there. You don't. You just need marcher. And by putting it in this form with this ending, it means was walking. All in one word. Okay, so I don't want to hear you say j'étais marché. S'il vous plaît, ne faites pas ça. <laughs> okay, don't do that. He was reading. Okay, well, that's the verb lire. D'accord? Donc, il lisait. Again, I have no place for the verb être in there. She was eating, manger. D'accord? Elle mangeait. D'accord? And we were talking. We were talking. Nous parlions. You see? So that's one way to use the imparfait. Someone was doing something. Okay. Now you also want to use the imparfait to express what you used to do. What you used to do. Okay. Not just something you did once or twice. This is something you used to do um, over and over and over. Something that repeated itself regularly. Okay. Repetitive nature. That's very important. Because we talked about the passé composé. That's what you use when you have a sequence of events. Something had a beginning and an ending. Uh, the things that you used to do in the imperfect, of course, they also had a beginning and an ending. I, I get that. I mean, you know, if you used to, um, when, when you were a kid, you know, you used to play in the park after school. Well, that's not something you did just once, right? It had a repetitive nature. That's the imparfait. So look, let's do some translating here. Again, I know I haven't told you how to form the imperfect yet, but that's the easy part, guys. The the most important thing is going to know, you know, for you to know when to use this tense. Okay? So when I was little, quand j'étais petit or petite, Okay, in the summer, I used to always go to my grandmother's house. I don't. Pendant l'été, uh, j'allais toujours chez ma grand-mère. Okay, this is the. Oh, look, I made a mistake. Uh, this is the imparfait. Right here. This is the imparfait. Right here. D'accord. Okay. The story goes on. Donc, j'allais toujours chez ma grand-mère. Et nous, the verb for climb is grimper, grimper. Nous grimpions toujours en haut. That means to the top d'un arbre. Hein? Pour espionner des gens. D'accord? Uh, nous grimpions. I wanted you to see that. Of course, you know, I actually was tempted to write on grimpé. Uh, but either one is fine because nous and on both mean we. D'accord? But that is the imparfait. Uh, notice I didn't say anything that actually happened in this little text. These are just things that I used to do. Now, the passé composé, a, a sequence of events, beginning and endings. Let's say, look, I'm going to put this down here. Let's look at this. Don't ask me where I get these examples. But <laughs> So, one, we're going to use the imparfait and the passé composé together. Once, when I was 10 years old, alors, 
une fois quand j'avais 10 ans. D'accord? This is the imperfect. I was 10. I'm setting the scene. I was 10 years old. What did I do? Well, I caught a cricket and I ate it. <laughs> uh, those are two things that happened. You know, I grabbed that cricket and that grabbing of the cricket, catching of the cricket had a beginning and an ending and then popped it in my mouth and it was over with two things that happened, sequence of events. Donc, j'ai attrapé un cricket et je l'ai mangé. I'll let you decide if that's a true story. <laughs> okay, so voilà. You can see here, again, I'm just pointing out imparfait, no helping verb, no past participle, like down here in the passé composé, you have both of those, right? Helping verb, past participle, okay? Now, that's the hard stuff. Forming the imparfait is not difficult. There's only one irregular verb in the imparfait, and that's really nice. I mean, we have some, well, only one irregular stem, I should say, in the imparfait. Look, I'm going to change this word right here, and I'm going to write stem. So make sure you write that down in your cours. There's only one irregular stem in the imparfait. There are a few verbs that I'll show you in a, in a couple of minutes that have some little irregular things about them, but your irregular verb is être, okay? Right here, être. Um, so besides the verb être, right, uh, what are the last three letters of all verbs in the present tense new form? Can you think about that? Yeah, you know this, okay? So the last letters are O-N-S, right? of the new form in the present tense. Look, knowing the new form of your present tense verbs is going to be very important in forming the imparfait. Um, but generally speaking, the new form is not the hardest one in a present tense conjugation. And why? Because of the ONS that's on it, right? So to form the stem, You know, when you're forming tenses in French, you very often begin with a stem. And what that means is just the first part of your verb. Uh, and all different tenses have different ways of forming stems. You'll see that. This may be the first time that, that I've talked to you about forming a stem. But yeah, so that's the part of the verb that you're going to need to have. And then you're going to have endings to add on to it. Okay? So you need to know the new form of the verb. Uh, and that's what we were just talking about. Donc, new form of the verb in question. So, once you've found the new form of the verb, you're going to take off that O and S, and then, voila, you have the stem. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. If we have a verb like finir, finir, what is the new conjugation of finir? Donc, nous finissons. Everybody agree? Nous finissons. So there you have your O-N-S. So you see this F-I-N-I-S-S -S right here? Well, guess what? That is your stem. D'accord? And I put a little dash next to it here because you can't just have the stem. You have to have endings to go on there. So nous finissons, we finish, we are finishing. When we put it in the imperfect, remember it's going to mean we were finishing or we used to finish. That cool? So the imperfect endings chart, let's do this together and fill it in on your cours with me. We are going, let me just scoot this up. So let's start with the je form. So you're going to have a verb and then your ending is going to be a i s. D'accord? C'est pareil pour le verbe, euh, pour euh, tu, d'accord? Ça va être A, I, S. D'accord? For il, elle, and on, you'll have your verb stem, and then your ending will be A, I, T. The new form, you'll have your stem, the ending will be I, O, N, S. 
The VU form, your ending will be I, E, Z. Uh, and then for your IL, EL, third person, plural, you have your verb stem. And then this is a long ending, uh, A, I, E, N, T. Okay, I'll tell you how they're all pronounced here in just a minute. So let's take this verb, finir, right? Because that was what we used in our example. And let's write some sentences. And now look, here in the left, for the English, I have written these in two ways. I was finishing my homework. I used to finish my homework. It's because it, it, it depends on the context and what you want to say. But for both of these, you're going to use the imparfait. Donc, je finis. Now look, that's my stem, right? And then I have to get grab my ending from up here. Je finissais. Right? Je finissais mes devoirs. You can say mon devoir if you only had one. Okay? That one can go either way. Donc, je finissais mes devoirs. And what about tu? Donc, tu finis, ending, A-I-S, tes devoirs. And he was finishing his homework. Il finissait ses devoirs. On continue. Oui. Um, oh, I see what I've done here. Hold on. <laughs> Let me put this down. So, she used to finish her homework. Elle finissait ses devoirs. And then we, I put this here so you could see the on in action. On finissait nos devoirs. I, I really wanted you to see that because you might not be too uh, used to using on to mean we. When you use on, you always have to use, uh, you always have to conjugate it in the singular way, okay? So with an A-I-T and not an I-O-N-S. But if on means we, like it does in this example, look, we still do use no devoir for our homework. You wouldn't use S-E-S if, like, like we did up here for her, if we is meant to mean, uh, if on is meant to mean we, you use no. D'accord? Uh, no. Okay, so we, now let's use the other kind of we. We were finishing our homework. Nous finis. That's our stem. Remember, I-O-N-S is our ending. Nos devoirs. So, on finissait nos devoirs and nous finissions nos devoirs. They mean the exact same thing. Uh, you were finishing your homework. Let's use a vous this time. Vous finissiez vos devoirs. You're writing all this down. They were finishing their homework. I'll go with an il. Il finissait leur devoir. Got it? Okay. Now, pronouncing... I told you I was going to tell you how to pronounce these. I already have, but perhaps you didn't hear me. Pronouncing the imparfait, uh, imparfait endings... There are four endings that sound exactly the same, and they are not I-O-N-S and I-E-Z, obviously, yon, uh, The ones that sound exactly the same are the one that I have my little picture next to on all of these. You'll have an up, uh, sorry, you have I-E-S, 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 I'm going to make it bold. And then over here you have a-I-E-N-T. Those are the ones that sound the same. D'accord? So they're pronounced. I want you to say them with me or repeat them after me. E, E, E. Yes, I caught that. <laughs> uh, and then this one over here is also pronounced E. So E, 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 E. Echo. Even though you have lot, especially it's usually this one that gives people trouble because you see all of those vowels and you really want to say I or something like that. But it's just a. Now we talked about être being the only irregular verb in the imparfait, and then I changed the word verb to stem. So I want you to change that as well. 
on your cour. Uh, it's the only irregular stem, but why? Okay, think about this. What? How do you say we are in a new form uh, in French? We are. Well, we say nous sommes, right? And so with, when you have a verb like nous sommes, you can't take an O and S off because there's no O and S. <laughs> so être is the only verb that doesn't end in O and S in the present tense. D'accord? So let's write that in here. O and S. So that's at least logical, isn't it? And I'll bet you've seen this être conjugation in the imperfect a lot. Okay? Because how often do we use the verb être all the time? Donc, j'étais. D'accord? J'étais. This is my stem, the ET. That's the stem for être. Okay, so for tu, été, and then we add our ending. Il été, a été. Elle été, a été. We were, and I'm going to use the on for this one. I want you to practice that. On été, a été. Nous étions. Nous étions, vous étiez, comme ça, uh, ils étaient, A-I-E-N-T, pronounced été, ils étaient, ils étaient. And then, of course, elles étaient, comme ça. So let's just go through this and I want you to pronounce them uh, with me, okay? J'étais, tu étais, il était. Elle était, on était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. D'accord? That's one you use all the time, if you're not already. Now look, I, I went back and added this in right before beginning the lesson. For one reason, it shows up in my practice cards, and I don't want you to be confused. The verb falloir is unique. So just in case you don't recognize that infinitive falloir, because we don't see it in the infinitive form a ton, it's the one you use when you say il faut. You know, uh, it is necessary. And then we follow that up a lot of times just with an infinitive, right? Il faut. Well, this verb doesn't have a new form. It just doesn't. You can only use it in the il form. So I didn't want you sitting around saying, gosh, what's the new form of falloir? Because you can't say je faux. No, the only thing that can faux is il. It's just like the verb uh, to snow, right? Il neige. I can't snow. You can't snow. It can. And the verb pleuvoir. Il pleut. It's raining. I can't rain. You can't rain. It's the same with the verb falloir. So there's no new form. I want to show you because you have to learn this uh, stem. And it's not an irregular stem. It's just a strange verb <laughs> that doesn't have a new form at all. So your stem for the verb falloir is uh, F-A-L-L. -L. D'accord? So the only way that you're ever going to see it, since it can only be used with il, is going to be il fallait. That's the only way you'll see falloir in the imparfait. D'accord? Okay, now I have to show you some other verbs. If you have been good about learning your verbs in the present tense, when you learned regular ER verbs, you probably learned um, that the ver verbs ending in C-E-R have something a little different about them in the new form. Okay, so the present tense new form of verbs like commencer has a spelling change. So let's conjugate commencer in the new form. Nous commençons. You see this C, the cédille that's right there. Okay, that's important because it will go in your stem, okay? So your stem will be like that, okay? But it gets stranger. Let me just copy that. Well, let's go on over here and fill in our conjugation chart for commencer in the imparfait. Alors, je commence, tu commence, il 
commencé à été. And then let's skip down to il, hein? plural, il commencé à été. The reason the sedia on the C uh, has to be there in the new form of the present tense is because if it wasn't there, it would affect the pronunciation. It would sound like nu kamanku. <laughs> and that's not pretty, okay? So the C, uh, when it's followed by an O, if it doesn't have a sedia, it's not softened. It doesn't sound like an S. So that's why the sedia is there. Think of the word garçon. If the sedia were not there, it would be garçon. <laughs> okay, so the je, tu, il, and il forms have to have the sedia because an A cannot soften the C sound either. All right, so je commençais, tu commençais, il commençait, il commençait. But the new form and the vous form, look what I'm going to do. That's not the stem. Something's going to change. I'm going to take that sedia off and I'm just going to put a regular C on there. Because my ending, I-O-N-S, you see that I softens the C sound. That French is just like that. It has to sound pretty, right? So, nous commencions. Nous commencions without a sedia. Same thing for the vous form. Look, we're going to take that sedia off, put a regular C, and E-E-Z. Okay? Commencier. Vous commencier. So, try to retain that. That's for all verbs ending in C-E-R. Now, you have something different with verbs ending in G-E-R, and I know you remember the new form uh, of the verb manger, right? So let's write it over here together. Nous mangeons. So you see this E that's right here. Again, it's for pronunciation. If it's not there, it sounds like mangon, and that's not nice. So our stem is going to retain the E, d'accord? M-A-N-G-E is our stem. So the je form, je manger, let me get those cats off, je manger, right? You know what? I'm going to scroll all this down so it can be together. That's nicer, okay? Je manger, tu manger, with the E, okay? Uh, il manger. Donc, il mange. Because an A can't soften that G sound either. Uh, let's skip nu and vous, because, yeah, there's going to be something weird about them. Il mange. You have tons of vowels there. It's still pronounced mange. The new form, and I'm sure you've already guessed this, we're going to take the E off. Because the I in your ending softens the G. Okay, so let's try to remember that nous mangeons and vous mangez. Comme ça. Okay. And I only have one more strange kind of verb to show you. And this one, if you're a grammar person, I think you're going to like it because it just looks funny in the imperfect, but you're going to be like, what? Seriously? But yes. Okay, so verbs that end in I E R. Um, let's just take étudier for an example. Let's write down the new form. Donc, nous étudions. Oh, if I could write. Nous étudions. Right? So, our stem is étudie. Right? Don't forget the I. So many people want to forget the I. You can't forget the I. All you're taking off is the O and S. That's the only thing. Okay? So, don't forget the I. Now, let's take our stem and come over here and add our endings to it. Donc, j'étudiais, d'accord? Tu étudiais, il étudiais, yep, we're going to skip nous and vous for now, and ils étudiaient. So, j'étudiais, tu étudiais, il étudiait, gosh! With a T, Jennifer. Uh, il étudie and ils étudie. D'accord? What about the new and vous form? This is the part I think, if you like grammar, I think you're going to like it because it just looks so weird. I am not going to take that I off. I bet you thought I was. But I'm not. I'm just going to add my ending. 
And I have two eyes in there. Doesn't that look weird? And here too. <laughs> it looks strange, so strange that most people think, oh, that's, it can't be true. <laughs> but listen, you even hear it. It's very subtle. But I just want you to listen. Don't have to re repeat just yet. J'étudie, tu étudie, il étudie, nous étudions, vous étudiez, ils étudie. Do you hear that? Nous étudions. I'm not saying nous étudions, but you hear the eye getting pulled out. That you definitely hear the two eyes. Nous étudions, vous étudiez. D'accord? <laughs> That's cool. Uh, here are some expressions that are very often used uh, with the imparfait. Okay, why? Because they imply repetition or habitual actions in the past. And I'll bet you know most of these. You might not know autrefois. Autrefois is a nice word. It means in the past. Can you say dans le passé? Yes, of course you can. Okay. Uh, autrefois, chaque jour. Chaque semaine, chaque année, de temps en temps, d'habitude, en général, fréquemment, généralement, habituellement, parfois, quelquefois, souvent, toujours, tous les jours, tous les mois, tout le temps. So those, you know, they're good ones. It's definitely not a definitive list, but these are some that you will see over and over again when you're implying, remember, repetition or habitual actions in the past which require the empathy. Uh, just a couple of examples, okay? So I was reading the newspaper. The first thing is the verb lire. So we're going to find the stem. Uh, look. Let's come down here. We're going to find the stem, okay? So the stem is nu. Um, hold on. <laughs> uh, okay, so the stem is nu lisons, right? Nu lisons. We're going to take off the O and S, and then we're left with L I S, and that's our stem. Okay? And then all we have to do is add the endings. So our stem for lire is L I S. I've got myself lost on here. So, I was reading the newspaper. Oh, look. Everything's back to normal. Donc, je lisais, remember, that's my ending, le journal. D'accord? How about we were reading a good book? Nous lisions un bon livre. Or maybe you prefer, on lisait un bon livre. D'accord? They were reading a magazine. Il lisait un magazine. D'accord? And just one more thing. We're going to talk about using the imparfait and the passé composé together. Uh, and then this is going to be the end of the lesson, and you can hop right on all of the other resources there. Um, just... Uh, Make sure you follow the steps that I've provided for you, and I think you'll benefit the most from uh, those resources if you do follow them step by step. So we were reading the magazine. Now look, we were verb ing. That is the imparfait. Oui. Alors, nous lisions le magazine. Here's what we were doing. Setting the scene. It's descriptive. And then... Bam, something happened. So, what happened? The phone ring, rang. Quand le téléphone passé composé a sonné. Ah, oh, there. Okay, quand le téléphone a sonné. So, this happens a whole lot. Um, using the imparfait and the passé composé together, you're setting the scene, giving the description with the imparfait, and then bam, something happens. Okay, so you can look forward to that in another lesson, okay, because today was mostly about 
learning when to use the imparfait as opposed to the passé composé and learning how to form it. Je vous remercie et je vous dis à très bientôt. Au revoir.